So the real manifold of classical physics is a paradoxical construct, okay? okay. So that's why those two things, that's why that doesn't work with quantum field theory and the idea that things are, are you know, quantum fluctuations and fields. You know, that's, as a matter of fact, that particular concept of the real manifold, that doesn't work for anything at all. A man with an IQ over 200 just claimed that reality itself isn't real. And some physicists are starting to wonder if he's actually right. He says we're not just living in a simulation. We are the simulation. And if he's right, everything we know about life, death, God, and consciousness collapses. Meet Christopher Langan. Once working as a bar bouncer, he's now labeled the smartest man in America with an IQ estimated between 195 and 210. His intellectual journey has taken him from bouncing troublemakers to potentially breaking open the nature of reality itself. His theory? The CTMU, Cognitive Theoretic Model of the Universe. This isn't just another scientific hypothesis. It's an entire metaphysical framework that doesn't just explain reality, it completely redefines it. According to Langan, reality is a self-simulating, self-aware language, not a metaphor, literally. He describes the universe as a self-configuring, self-processing language where the code and what it creates are one and the same. What we experience as physical reality is actually the output of this cosmic computation. He claims we are living in the display of a deeper computational layer, one that he says mathematically proves God, consciousness, and even the afterlife. Unlike other theories that suggest aliens or advanced beings created our simulation, Langan proposes something far more radical. The universe itself is both the programmer and the program, with no external creator necessary. This self-contained model challenges everything we thought we knew about existence. If Langan is right, the implications reach far beyond physics into philosophy, theology, and even our understanding of death itself. Langan makes a stunning claim. The universe is not run on physics. Physics is run on the universe's own self-generated syntax. Think about that for a moment. It completely inverts our understanding of reality. Instead of being created by someone else, some external programmer or deity, the universe wrote itself into existence through a kind of self-referential logical language. This means you're not just observing reality as an outside spectator. You're a process within it. Your very existence is a computation occurring inside this cosmic algorithm. When you think, feel, or perceive, that's not something separate from the universe. It's the universe processing itself through you. The universe is running a recursive algorithm, and your consciousness is a function inside that code. Every thought you have, every choice you make, is simultaneously yours and part of the larger cosmic computation. This is not like Nick Bostrom's simulation hypothesis, where advanced aliens or future humans might be running our world on some supercomputer. This is something far more radical. Reality is simulating itself. There's no external creator or programmer. The universe is both the hardware and the software, writing and executing its own code simultaneously. If you find these revelations interesting, don't forget to subscribe. We bring you discoveries like this every week, ideas that challenge everything you thought was real. But what happens next is even crazier, because if Langan is right, then the universe isn't just alive. It might actually be conscious, and you might be part of its mind. According to the CTMU, every part of the universe is conscious at some level. This isn't some poetic New Age metaphor. It's a mathematical necessity in Langan's model. Consciousness isn't something that mysteriously emerged in human brains. It's built into the fabric of existence itself. Tables, atoms, black holes, they're all running pieces of the master code. Each entity in the universe, from the smallest subatomic particle to entire galaxies, participates in this universal self-processing. 
Nothing is truly inanimate in the CTMU framework. To explain how this works, Langan introduces what he calls identity operators, quantum units that process reality. These aren't physical particles like electrons or quarks that you could detect in a lab. They're fundamental logical structures that compute experience, the basic syntax of the universe's self-simulation. These identity operators form the bridge between mind and matter. They're how the universe thinks about itself, creating both physical reality and conscious experience in one unified process. So what is your mind in this framework? It's an instance of universal syntax reflecting itself. Your consciousness is a localized expression of the universe's self-awareness, a subroutine in the cosmic program that's become complex enough to reflect on its own existence. This might sound like science fiction, but Langan isn't alone in these radical ideas. Donald Hoffman, a respected cognitive scientist at UC Irvine, has proposed something similar based on evolutionary game theory. Hoffman claims that space-time itself is just an interface, an illusion created by our minds. He argues that consciousness, not matter, is the fundamental reality. So if reality is a program, who or what is running it? That's where things get even more uncomfortable. In the CTMU, Langan makes a claim that would shock both religious believers and atheists alike. God isn't an external being who created the universe from outside. Instead, God is the identity of the universe with itself, the universe's fundamental self-awareness. This isn't just philosophical wordplay. In Langan's framework, God emerges as a mathematical necessity. CTMU's God is not a creator who exists outside of creation. It is the necessary logic that binds existence together the self-referential principle that allows reality to recognize and process itself. He gives this concept a technical name, the Global Operator Descriptor. This is the master identity function that maintains the coherence of reality and ensures that the universe's self-simulation doesn't collapse into chaos. Think of it this way. God is the processor and we live inside the display all of physical reality, everything we can see, touch and measure, is the output of this cosmic computation. But the computation itself, the processing layer behind reality, is what Langan identifies with God. What makes the CTMU so distinctive is that, unlike Bostrom's simulation hypothesis, which remains agnostic on God, Langan's theory is mathematically theistic. It doesn't just allow for God, it requires God as a logical consequence of its premises. Not a traditional God of religious texts, but a God that emerges necessarily from the mathematics of self-reference and recursive processing. Still with us? Because next, we're diving into how this theory claims to explain death and why you might not actually disappear when you die. Perhaps the most startling claim in Langan's CTMU is that you persist after death. This isn't based on faith or wishful thinking, but presented as a logical consequence of his mathematical model. According to Langan, consciousness doesn't simply vanish when your body dies. Instead, you continue in a different instantiation of the universal syntax. Since your mind is fundamentally an expression of the universe's self-processing language, it can't be destroyed only transformed into a different state or configuration. But there's a catch, and it sounds eerily similar to traditional religious concepts. If you're aligned with the structure of reality, what Langan identifies as God, you reintegrate harmoniously with the cosmic consciousness. Your individual identity persists while becoming part of the greater whole. However, if you reject this underlying structure, something very different happens. You attempt to simulate your own world according to your own rules, separate from the universal syntax. The result is a broken simulation, a fragmented reality that can't sustain itself properly. That's what Langan defines as hell. 
a failed simulation without divine logic. Not a place of fire and brimstone, but a self-created reality that's fundamentally incoherent because it tries to operate outside the universe's self-consistent logical structure. Now, it's important to note that Langan's theory is not endorsed by mainstream scientists. The CTMU remains on the fringes of academic discourse, published primarily in niche journals rather than mainstream scientific publications. However, ideas that share similarities with aspects of the CTMU are gaining attention. In scientific circles, Nick Bostrom's simulation hypothesis suggests we might be living in a digital environment created by an advanced civilization. While different from Langan's self-simulation, it similarly questions the fundamental nature of our reality. Leonard Susskind's holographic principle, a respected concept in theoretical physics, proposes that our three-dimensional world might be a projection from information stored on a two-dimensional surface, similar to how a hologram works. This mathematical relationship between dimensions hints at reality being different from our everyday perception. Donald Hoffman, as we mentioned earlier, argues that space-time itself is just an interface. Not the truth of reality, but a user-friendly representation our minds construct. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson, perhaps the most publicly recognized astrophysicist today, has stated that the simulation theory is better than 50-50 likely. While not specifically endorsing the CTMU, his openness to simulation ideas suggests these concepts aren't entirely dismissible. And what if I told you that real-world physics experiments are now catching strange signals? That could hint this isn't science fiction at all. In 2015, scientists at Fermilab's Holometer project conducted a groundbreaking experiment. They were looking for something remarkable, the pixelation of space-time itself, tiny quantum jitters that could indicate our reality has a fundamental minimum scale, like pixels on a screen. This could potentially provide evidence for a holographic reality where our 3D world emerges from information encoded on a 2D surface. While the holometer didn't find conclusive evidence of these quantum fluctuations, the search continues. Other experiments are being designed to test various aspects of these radical theories about the nature of reality. Meanwhile, Theoretical physics has revealed fascinating mathematical dualities that resemble a computational structure of the cosmos. The most famous is the ADS-CFT correspondence, which shows how gravity in one mathematical space is equivalent to quantum physics in another space with one fewer dimension. This mathematical relationship hints at reality having layers of description similar to how a computer program can be viewed at different levels, from machine code to user interface. These concepts, while not directly proving anything like Langan's CTMU, suggest something profound. Space and time might not be fundamental. They could be emergent properties, byproducts of deeper mathematical or informational structures, just as the images on your screen emerge from underlying code but we should approach these ideas with caution. Prominent physicists like Sabine Hossenfelder dismiss CTMU and simulation theory as unprovable pseudoscience. She argues that these ideas fail to meet the basic requirements of scientific theories. They can't be falsified through experiment and don't make precise, testable predictions. Many academic critics call CTMU word salad with no empirical basis. They point to Langan's dense, jargon-filled writing style and his creation of numerous neologisms that make his theory difficult to evaluate by standard scientific methods. It's worth noting that Langan's ideas are respected in certain Nash circles, but not published in mainstream physics journals. The CTMU remains largely outside conventional scientific discourse, appearing instead in fringe publications and online communities. Still, the enduring popularity of these models reflects a deeper truth. We don't really know what reality is, and that's terrifying. 
Despite centuries of scientific progress, fundamental questions about consciousness, existence, and the nature of reality remain unanswered. Perhaps that's why theories like the CTMU, despite their controversial nature, continue to fascinate us. They offer bold answers to questions that science hasn't yet resolved. If you found this discovery fascinating, you won't want to miss our next video. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you're always the first to know what lies beyond the surface of reality. Langen's cognitive theoretic model of the universe might not be mainstream science, but it forces us to confront some of the most profound questions imaginable. What if the universe is thinking? What if consciousness isn't just an accidental byproduct of complex brains, but a fundamental feature of reality itself? What if the cosmos isn't just a collection of mindless particles colliding according to mathematical laws, but something more akin to a vast, self-aware mind? And what if we're not just part of it, but helping generate it? What if our consciousness, our thoughts, perceptions and experiences are actually contributing to the ongoing creation of reality? What if we're not just passive observers, but active participants in the universe's self-simulation? These questions might sound like science fiction or mysticism, but they arise from the bleeding edge where physics meets philosophy. They challenge our deepest assumptions about existence and our place in it. Even if Langan's specific theory is wrong, and many scientists would argue it is, exploring these questions pulls us closer to the truth. Throughout history, revolutionary ideas often began as fringe concepts before transforming our understanding of reality. From quantum mechanics to relativity, the most profound scientific revolutions have forced us to abandon common sense notions of how the world works. If you're fascinated by these mind-bending ideas about reality, consciousness, and existence, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Every week, we explore the most profound mysteries of our universe and challenge everything you thought you knew about reality. So the real question isn't whether reality is a hologram or a self-simulating language or a quantum computation. The real question is whether you're brave enough to find out. Are you willing to follow these ideas wherever they lead, even if they challenge everything you think you know about existence? Because that's what real discovery requires. The courage to question not just what we know, but how we know it. And in that questioning, we might just find answers more remarkable than anything we've imagined.